Hello and welcome to Highlights. My name is Jim Strawn, host of the television program Highlights from the Heart of Our Community is brought to you through a collaboration between Jim Strawn and Company, the Media Center, and HD Media. And we welcome in our newest sponsor, Banker's Life. There's no life like the Banker's Life. We appreciate you tuning in today if you're a regular viewer of our show, and we certainly hope that you are. You know how much we love to focus on those grassroots organizations, those charitable, not-for-profit uh, groups and charities, and even businesses and, and, and people that are doing a great job to move our great state of West Virginia and our Canal Valley and our city of Charleston forward in a positive way so that we have a better place to live, learn, work, and to play. And on today's Highlights program, we're going to feature a couple different organizations that are doing just that. First, we're going to catch up with a good friend of mine. He happens to be the owner of the Appalachian Heritage Wood Shop. He is a woodworker. He loves all things wood. We're going to catch up with Gerald Vance in, in just a moment. He also has a very special uh, open shop coming up on July the 23rd. So we're going to see what the Appalachian Heritage Wood Shop is all about and kind of invite you to his open shop. And then after a little break, we're going to catch up with Jennifer Bauman. Jennifer happens to be a board member with the Kanawha, the Kanawha State Forest Foundation. And she has a lot of things going on throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall. And quite frankly, Kanawha State Forest is busy year round. So lots of good information coming your way. Lots of good insights. Sit back, relax, soak it all up. Take notes if you need to. It should be a wonderful show. And I turn to my right, I welcome back to the Highlights program. He's been on the show before, my good friend Gerald Vance. Gerald, how are you? I'm great, Jim. Good glad, to see you. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad it's good to, to see you. It's been a few years since I had you on. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Lots of things have happened. Let's remind the audience about your, a little bit about you and maybe okay. your journey to become who you are today. You're, you're from Canal Valley, right? Yes, I was born in the old Mountain State Hospital in Charleston on the west side. I know it. Uh, raised in South Charleston, mm -hmm. West Virginia. Black yep. Eagle, right? You yes, yes. Graduated from South Charleston, right? Yeah, I was a first graduating class from what was called the new high school back new in 1972. School. Yes. I, I love it. Well, let's talk about your journey to becoming the woodworker that you are today. And, of course, I'm going to dovetail with the Appalachian sure. Heritage Woodshop. But what, what was your interest in, in woodworking? Did you take shop in high school? I'm assuming. Uh, I, I actually <laughs> took it back then. It was available in junior high as well as high right. school. So I did take it. Uh, I used to help my grandfather quite a bit. Uh, I had my first paying job uh, when I was 14. So that was like 54 years ago. Oh, you know. nice. So, yeah, it's been a major part of my life. Yes. And so now you are the owner, and you also yes. host your own, what do you call it, educational video series about wood, about wood shop, right, about woodworking. Yes. But yes. you're the owner of the Appalachian Heritage Wood Shop. Where's your, yep. where's your shop? My shop is located in Culloden, West Virginia, mm -hmm. which uh, is midway between Hurricane and Milton. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cabell Putnam County line goes through my farm, so uh, I'm straddling the two counties there. Is, is, is the road that you're on, is it called Midway? It is called Middle Road. Middle Road, yes. so it's the middle yes. of the counties, right? It is, yes. So you're at 555 Middle Road, Culloden, West Virginia. Yes, that that's, is correct. That's where your shop is. Yes, it is. What are some things that you provide in your shop? What do you do? You, do you make things and, and sell them? I know you have a kind of a be proud of your Appalachian heritage, be proud of your Appalachian yes. uh, back, background and, 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 and where you're from. But do you make things and then sell them? And then we're going to talk about your series. What do you provide at your shop? Okay, uh, my main uh, focus is building custom furniture. So I will meet with the client and design a piece specifically for them uh, to fit their lifestyle, uh, a, a specific location in their residence or commercial uh, building. So that's the main focus of what I do. And then the secondary focus is my show, The Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. So you do this show. It, it, it airs on a public broadcast. Yes. And you've, you've have, you have a couple seasons under your belt. Yes. The episodes, how many in each season? Well, normally there's 13 episodes per season. The first season was a pilot season with only six episodes. Mm -hmm. So then season two, you did 13, 13 episodes? 13 full episodes, correct. And as we're taping this show, you're taping your season three, right? That is correct. I have uh, completed six, and I'm in the process of doing number seven now. I've done all of the on-location videos, and now I'm actually videoing in my shop only. 
Uh, one of the things that I do is I go to historic places in the state mm -hmm. and uh, feature a piece that they have, a, a piece of uh, furniture or woodworking uh, um, artifact. And that um, promotes the Appalachian uh, lifestyle. Uh, it promotes tourism in the state. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's educational because mm -hmm. our generation are familiar with the older uh, pieces of furniture, but the new generation is not. Where are some of the places that you've been? I know you've been to Blennerhassett Island. I've been to Blennerhassett Island. The most uh, uh, significant place I've been to that is not publicized that much is a place called Wildwood uh, Museum in Beckley. Mm -hmm. I've been to the uh, coal, um, the under, underground coal uh, tourist facility there. They have a superintendent's mine, uh, mine house there. I've been to the West Virginia Farm Museum. Uh, Heritage Farm and Museum Huntington, uh, right? in Huntington. Huntington. Um, there, there's some others. I, uh, uh, in St. Albans, there's one called Morgan's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only one I've done in Kanawha County. I'd like to do more locally, but uh, I'm having trouble finding some. So you'll go to these places, you'll see a piece of furniture. Do you reproduce it like it looked 100 years ago? Do you make it so it's functional as well? Do you do it as art? What's that's, your overall goal and, and mission when you see that, you? That's when a you good question, yeah. Jim. Uh, when I go to these historic places, uh, I will have some people in, in period attire uh, show mm -hmm. how the piece would have been used uh, 150, 200 years ago. Okay? So that's the intro to the show, and of course that is in black and white, and that sets the tone, you know. Uh, then I usually interview somebody that's a subject matter expert at that location to give the historical background knowledge, and that's the educational facility. Then I go back to my shop, and what I do is I redesign that piece and, and make it with some good quality um, hardwood, uh, good joinery, uh, and it, it fits today's lifestyle. You mentioned the wood that you use. Do you use many different woods? Where do you get your woods? I know you live on a farm. Do you try to harvest from your farm? Yeah. Do you get some imported in? Where does your that's, wood come from? That's a good question, Jim. Yeah. I do not uh, use any um, imported wood. The only wood that I use is what I call native hardwoods. Uh, native to your land or native to the Appalachian? Na native to the Appalachian okay. area. Okay. And I do try to harvest my own, and that's for a business reason. That mm -hmm. keeps my overhead lower. Uh, but I can also control the quality. In other words, I can have it milled to the, to the specs I want and then dry it the way I want it dried. So I get a better quality wood at a lower cost. Do you try to harvest wood from your land that is still thriving, or do you try to harvest wood that maybe something has been struck by lightning or it's coming down or it already looks like it's kind of had its life cycle. Right. You know what I'm asking? Yeah. Do you, you don't just go and go, I'm going to take that one out. It looks nice. No, I don't do that. I didn't uh, think you did. You I, like, because you like trees. <laughs> yes. There's nothing better than a good tree in the right place and nothing worse than a bad tree in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do is take what Mother Nature gives me. So if there's a storm or if there's insect damage and a tree dies, it perishes, I get that. Mm -hmm. And because I live in a farming community, a lot of the neighbors will uh, inform me if they have a dead tree or a tree that's storm damaged. Hey, Jerry, I got a tree you can use. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that's where I get most of my wood. What, what wood do you like to work with or what wood is best for what you're trying to reproduce for some of these historical heritage type of items? That, that's a good question. And uh, I like uh, walnut, cherry, maple, uh, oak, red oak, and white oak, and you have poplar, all those, sassafras. You, we, ha we have that in the yes, Appalachian. Yes, and, and some of these are, are, will be highlighted by a particular piece. I did, uh, I did a piece at Blennerhassett Island, and Blennerhassett Island is known for their walnut trees. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, huge walnut trees. It looks trees. like a forest of walnut trees. It, I've it been is, there. It is, it is. And, and it, they, keep the gra they keep the dents away, so it's just beautiful green, and then yep. all these walnut trees. Yeah, the, the state is actually doing a study on some of the walnut trees there to learn more about them because they're, they're so uh, uh, large and, and tight-grained. 
Uh, so. I, want, I want to talk a little bit more about your series. It, it's, okay. it's on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Yes. I think you're hoping to get it out more yes. national, maybe in the Kentucky, maybe even in Texas. Yes. And even though it's Appalachian, you're, you, know, you hashtag is like, be proud of your Appalachian Correct. heritage, right? Yep. So hashtag be proud of your Appalachian heritage. But maybe people in Utah and Colorado and California and Montana might catch your show and go, that's pretty interesting. So it's not just an Appalachian interest. Would you say that? Is that fair that, to say? That, that is very fair. Uh, the people in the Appalachian area will be able to uh, recognize a lot of the pieces and, and a lot of the uh, lifestyle that I, that I feature. But people outside of the Appalachian area, uh, they like it because it's educational. Uh, it gives them an insight into the culture and the history of the people that were raised here in the Appalachian area. And as you know, West Virginia is the only state that is totally encapsulated mm -hmm. in the Appalachian area. So that's why it's featured uh, as prominently as it is on the show. I happen, I happen to know that. We're having a great conversation with Gerald Vance. Gerald is the owner and the operator of Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. Makes things in his shop, sells them, but also is the host of the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop series, video series that's aired on public broadcast. He's in season three right now, actually taping season three. To learn more about Gerald, go to his website, AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. We have it on the screen. You can also give them a call, 304-690-0430, I know, understand how this public broadcasting thing works. We're always looking for some underwriters and some, some yes. partners to, to yes. partner with you. And if people want to partner with you, corporations, organizations, different people, different foundations, if they're watching this, hey, I'd like to be a part of this. Just give you a call, Gerald, and you'll just talk with them. Yes, I, I would appreciate that greatly because it does cost uh, a fair amount to produce a series. Um, and, and I would like to get some financial assistance from some people that are as interested in promoting the state as I am. And it is very educational. I've watched uh, quite a few of, uh, of your episodes. You, you, you do a great job and you're yeah. just so thorough with your... I, I, I think I look at you as an artist. I know you're a woodworker. And you yeah. like to say I'm a woodworker and... But you are so talented and you're so thorough and you've been around it for so long and you're so good. The yeah. series is, is very well done. We're having an open shop. Yes. Yes, we are. So we want to invite you. We want to invite you to Gerald's open shop, the Appalachian Heritage Wood Shop open shop. You can see mm -hmm. on the screen there, July the 23rd. You don't have any excuses. He's going to keep it open for 12 hours, 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. You can see we talked about the address earlier, 555 Middle Road, Culloden. If you're doing GPS, you put in Culloden 25510. That there's a telephone number. Again, you can call to get information about it. But Gerald will be there all day on July the 23rd, 8A to 8P. What can folks expect and why should they come by, Gerald? Well, there will be uh, some light refreshments. Okay, nice. You know. Um, and there will be uh, door prizes given away. There will be about five door prizes, and some of these are valued as much as 200 to $300 each. I don't have those written down here, but I have a feeling you, you know what they are, right? Or yes. A couple of them. Yeah, I, talk about the door prizes. Uh, one of them is a Veritas twin screw vise. Uh, anybody that's a woodworker will know what that is. It's mm. a very prominent uh, vise. Uh, let's see. There's also a... Um, Downdraft dust table. Uh, there's also a pen and crescent template. Uh, pen and crescent is a very old woodworking joint. Uh, it's not prominent now, but I have a, um, a template and a jig that will make that, be given that away. So, um, and there'll be some hold downs and some other things. So it's, it's for woodworkers, they'll be interested in. So the open shop, July 23rd, that's a Saturday. We're going to start yep. at 8 a.m. You can get yep. there early if you want to get something out of the, out of the way. Stop by for an yep. hour and then go on with the rest of your day. Or yep. if you want to do something all day, stop by 5, 6, 7, all the way up to the 8 o'clock. shop's air conditioned. It is So air it's going to be very comfortable. I've been out there a couple of times. You have plenty yep. of parking, right? Plenty of parking, yes. 
So yeah. if people put it, that address in their GPS and they don't know where you are, will that take you there okay? It, it'll get them uh, close, with, pretty close. Very close, you'll yeah, see, because you'll just follow the traffic. Yeah, because I am out in the country, so it, it'll get you real close. And um, um, out in the country, the buildings are spread far apart, so it's easy to find. We're ha yes, we are talking with uh, Gerald Vance, the owner of Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. He's having an open shop on Saturday, July the 23rd. 8A to 8P, 555 Middle Road, Culloden, West Virginia, 25510. Telephone number is 304-690-0434 if you need to give them a call and say, hey, where am I going? Where, where are you? I can't find you, but I know I'm close, Gerald. But yeah, stop by the, uh, the open shop, uh, learn all about all the things that uh, Gerald has to offer, and maybe learn more about his season three. I'm sure he'd love to talk with you about possibly being a partner with his with his uh, season yes. season three. You can also find you on Facebook. You have a pretty active uh, yeah, Facebook I have, account, uh, Facebook, I think, and LinkedIn, LinkedIn, and an Instagram and account, Instagram, right? Instagram, correct. And it just it just look, search for Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. Yes. Yeah. Whew, Gerald, is there anything else I need to ask you? Is there anything I haven't asked you that you need the audience to know about what you do and why you do it and how much you love it? And if not, I'll just let you have a, a parting shot with the well, audience. Just to let uh, the audience or the viewers know, um, I do have a background uh, in woodworking. Uh, at the young age of 55, mm -hmm. I went back to college and got a degree in fine woodworking just so I could teach woodworking. So you're actually, is it a, called a certification or is it called it, it is a, an educational degree? It, it is an AAS, AAS. which is a two-year degree from okay. a community and technical college here in, in the state of West Virginia. Okay. Uh, I'm the only one in the state that has the two-year degree from in the state because the program, unfortunately, was shut down shortly after I graduated. How do you how do you continue to hone that skill? Do you go to other workshops? Do you go to do you talk to other woodworkers? Is there a, a network yep. of woodworkers that you belong to? Or is there an association, or do you guys just know each other osmosisly and you get together and you yep. go, oh, and you just you just communicate with each other? I, I'm assuming. Yeah, I communicate with a lot of other workers. There's a lot of uh, woodworking uh, organizations I belong to. Uh, there's a local woodworking club, there's a local wood turning club, and then there's a national um, uh, club that uh, promotes making period furniture um, uh, that I belong to. So, and, I, and I didn't ask you, you started the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop not real, real long ago, four or five years ago? It started in 2017. I met with the SBA and set it up properly. Small Business Administration of West Correct. Virginia. Correct. That, that took about six months, and then I actually hired a local legal firm to get trademark. I'm yeah, trademark, yeah. and that's a big thing there, uh, and that is to ensure that viewers that see my uh, show uh, do not uh, take an original piece that I design and take it out and mass produce it. So what's trademark? The Appalachian Heritage Woodshop show and, and the company and that the whole the show is trademark. Well I'm trademarked in three different classifications, okay? okay. Um, so I'm trademarked in the um, um, film okay. the video. I'm trademarked in written. Okay. So you know uh, and then I'm trademarked in educational. Okay. So if anybody uh, tries to duplicate what I'm doing in those fields, then th that would be an infringement. You know, one of the things I like to talk about a lot is when you, you, when you find something you, you love to do for a livelihood, you, you really don't have to go to work the rest of the day, the rest of your days. And yep. I think you're kind of that guy. You mean you live right there on the farm, you live yep. on the land, and your shop is on your property, right? That's, so, and that's you love correct. what you do. Yeah, what I did, I actually thought, you know, I, I took three things that I'm very passionate about and combined the three together to create the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. And, of course, woodworking is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other one is uh, West Virginia, love West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is what I call living history. Mm -hmm. So I look at the uh, relics, the woodworking relics, the wooden relics from the past uh, that show how the Appalachian people uh, perform their daily chores. I love it. Yeah. Gerald Vance, everybody. Gerald Vance, the owner of Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. He owns the shop. He's also the host of his own 
television series called Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, which he now has a trademark for, which is a, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Proud West Virginian. Uh, Gerald, thanks a lot for your time today. We appreciate you, buddy. Jim, I appreciate you having me on. And we hope to see you on July the 23rd, the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, July 23rd. It runs from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. You can see on the screen there, hosted by Gerald himself, 555 Middle Road, Culloden. Give him a call if you'd like to learn more, if you get lost out that way in the country, as he says, 304-690-0430. Some refreshments and some wonderful door prizes. As he mentioned, you'll get a chance to see some of his equipment and some of his, uh, well, just his, his whole shop. It's pretty neat. Like I said, I have been there a few times. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're going to be catching up with Jennifer Bauman. Jennifer is with the Canal State Forest Foundation. Lots of things happening at Canal State Forest. Lots of things happening throughout the state of West Virginia, the Canal Valley, and the city of Charleston. But I can't wait. To, when I'm joined, I'll be uh, uh, joined by uh, Jennifer Bauman from Canal State Forest. I'll be right back. And we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our supporters of the television program. Highlights from the heart of our community is brought to you through a collaboration between Jim Strawn and Company, the Media Center, and HD Media. And our newest sponsor, special thanks to Banker's Life. There's no life like the Banker's Life. For over 140 years, Banker's Life has provided financial security to their clients and policyholders. During that same time, Banker's Life has helped change the lives of many of their associates personally, professionally, and financially. Questions? Do you have questions regarding Medicare and Social Security? Give them a call, 304-757-4134. Or if you're interested in a free review with a licensed agent or looking for a new career in the financial industry, contact Dennis Harmonson. Dennis dot Harmonson, H-A-R-M-I-S-O-N, at bankerslife.com. There's no life like the banker's life. And we welcome you back. As promised at the top of the show, I, I now welcome into the program Jennifer Bauman. Jennifer, how are you? Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's good to see you. Now, you're a board member with the Kanawha State Forest Foundation. So Correct. you're obviously a volunteer for Canal State Forest. I'm also the volunteer coordinator. You're the volunteer coordinator. <laughs> Which means I'm the unpaid person who helps the unpaid people come out and work. <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of unpayment going on there. Yes. But that's what foundations do and that's Absolutely. what good local you know, state forests have. How long have you been involved with the forest? Well, many years as a child, but I yeah. mean, as a board member, mm -hmm. it's I've been in town about seven years. So you like the Canal State Forest? Oh, yeah, you? love it. Many um, of us do. My it's, dad it, was a state State, assistant state forester. Okay. My mom was a teacher, and they loved the forest. So you got it honestly, did you? It, it, yeah, it was their favorite. What's what? What so? What makes Canal State Forest? Just in your opinion, I'm kind of asking. Is just your opinion of why is it so special out there? I don't know. I call it the People's Park. The People's I mean, Park. so many of the state parks now that have become resorts, they get a little pricey. Mm -hmm. But Canal State Forest, you can go out there and hike for free, bike for free. You know, the camping's inexpensive compared to the resort parks, for example. And I just think it's a wonderful resource. You can't believe you're right outside the city of Charleston's I was going to say that. You can't believe you're right outside the city of Charleston, but your phone will not work and you'll feel like you're all <laughs> the way up in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Which is what some campers like to have some Exactly. Get but away from society. But it's one of the reasons we have rare songbirds. We have nine mm -hmm. species of healthy bats. We have an awful lot going on out there. I mean, yeah, we're, sh we're showing some beautiful pictures of the flowers now and the birds that you mentioned. And Canal State Forest, as I also mentioned at the top of the show, it's a season, every season. You, the forest is there for you all four seasons. Correct. I mean, we, we do, I, we're known for the the, uh, the New Year hike on the on January 1st, aren't we? Every mm -hmm. year. Folks come together on January first. First day hike. For, is that called? Is that called yeah. first day hike? Uh -huh. yes, first day hike. You have something kind of uh, neat that uh, you want to talk about. This uh, this uh, planned installation. Is it in yet? Is the vault toilet in yet? And what's it going to mean to the park when we have that in? Canal State Forest has kind of been an innovator on the state park level. We're the first and only park to have a wheelchair accessible playground, and we have a paved trail. We have a paved parking lot in this zone. And we'll soon be adding a vault toilet. The vault toilet. I, I'm, I'm excited to hear a little bit about that. I'm familiar with 
ADA, but I don't know what a vault toilet is. Well, it's a pit toilet that would be very sophisticated. Is okay. that the best way to describe okay. it? In other words, if you go down to the New River Gorge, you're going to see this type of toilet. They're prefab concrete, and they have a solar fan venting system. They're virtually odorless, and they're large enough so you can turn completely with a wheelchair. So it'll be good for everyone to have a bathroom right there close by the facilities, but especially helpful for the folks who are disabled. Because let's face it, loading and unloading and reloading and looking for a bathroom, it's really a hassle and it tends to shorten people's visits or it tends to discourage them from coming out to Canal State Forest at all. So we have a big development though recently. The Christopher Reeve Foundation has given us a $25,000 grant. Now that completes the funding for the vault toilet next to the Spotted Salamander Trail and the new ADA playground. And that, that toilet is actually on order. It will be completed on the construction sometime in this month. They'll be bringing it out in August. So we hope to have it in place by mid to late August. So this is a happening deal. We have some additional funds. Those will be shifted to another project, which will be putting a vault toilet next to the two brand new wheelchair accessible fishing piers. For those of you who don't know, Davis Creek has been restored to its natural flow, and these two fishing piers will service anyone who has the Class Q license. And what we want to do is have a vault toilet near there as well, because otherwise, same situation. Where do you go? You got to load up again, offload, reload. It's a hassle. So we really want to make it easy for folks to come out because we say the forest is for every, make that a separate word, body, everybody, because, hey, that's what we want to do. It should be for the entire community to enjoy. You're trying to do some things to make it ex the park accessible exactly. to, our, to our folks who are in a wheelchair or handicapped or disabled somehow or somewhere. Or even mobility challenged, well, yeah, you know, sure. for seniors, for I example. I love it. So what, what are we doing? Well, basically, we did a renovation on the Spotted Salamander Trail, which is a paved trail, about Stop six right years there. ago. So at the Salamander Trail, the week that it opened, do you remember what year that was? It might have been in the, it had to be in the 80s or it 90s. It was Governor Moore's The week tenure. it opened, I took some handicapped uh, teenagers and adults out there awesome. in wheelchairs and we use the Salamander Trail. So it's still out there. Still out there. It had fallen into terrible disrepair. When I got back to town, I took my mom out. She was on a walker at okay. the time. And she's just like, your father and Osborne I are rolling into graves. Oh, she no. said, this needs to be restored. So we did something about it, didn't so we? So there we go. Yeah. Mama kicked in some money and off we went. <laughs> okay, nice. What are we doing? What's going on? Okay, so now that was renovated. At that time, we got a paved parking lot. And we have a shelter there that has a wheelchair accessible ramp. Then the foundation raised $80,000. Some oh very my. generous benefactors right during the pandemic put it that a new wheelchair accessible playground in. Mm -hmm. It's the first and only of its kind in the state park system right now. Oh, good and what's we, unique yeah. about it is it has the pour in place rubber, which is a solid foundation that allows you to roll out in your wheelchair. There's a wheelchair platform swing so you can roll onto it and actually swing in your wheelchair. There it is. So there it is. That looks really nice. Yeah. That's Andrew Bungard, by the way. A lot okay. of people know him, a very, uh, his yeah. mother's very active in the ADA community yeah. and trying to get things better for folks who very are in wheelchairs. Nice. And what I was going to say about it, though, we also did a design on the ha second half of the park, uh, of the playground, where we couldn't afford the solid foundation. We put in virgin rubber chips. So there's no wood chips, which means no dust, no allergens. You know, people who have asthma, people who have cancer treatments can also come out there to that playground and enjoy an experience without having reactions to wood chips, which is what we normally use in our state parks due to the cost. Is it being utilized, I hope? A lot. Oh, it is nice. the most used playground out there. Oh. And if you haven't been, you absolutely have to come. The kids love it. It's it blends the able-bodied and the handicapped smoothly, which really makes it nice, too. It's like an interaction for kids to understand mm. each other. Believe it or not, this might be the first time some people are watching this show. Tell people where Canal State Forest uh, is, or maybe they're watching this, or they're just new to the market. They're just new to Charleston. They mm -hmm. haven't seen this show. We're talking about Canal State Forest like we know where it is. <laughs> you and I know where it is. How do, you, how do you describe someone not from here? How do you get that Canal State Forest? Well, it's so six where is miles it? outside of the city boundaries, if that makes sense. Okay. The community that you drive through is Loudendale. Mm -hmm. 
So it's um, it's not a tough drive. You can get through it through South Hills. You can also get through it the back way. I call it the Davis Creek back way, right? Right. You yeah, can go so up South State Street and um, South Park Street. Really, all it, roads lead to Canal State yes. Forest. You can get through three or four different ways. Cane, how, up to the Cane. How many acres is Canal State Forest? 9,300. 9,300? I don't think I knew that. Yeah. That's very, more than I would have said. Very, very large. And it was developed by the Civilian Conservation Corps, which is one of the reasons you have a lot of things that are out of sync with ADA. Because think about it. These buildings were put up in the late 30s. Sure. So that's, you know, it's just an issue of the age of the forest. You have some neat sun print shops coming out. Print shops are Print shops, right? Print shops. You have one for children on July the 28th, and then one for folks who are adults on July the 31st. Talk about the Sun Print Days. What's that all about? Well, the Sun Print Workshop is actually a really fantastic thing to try. This is going to yeah. be our first workshop. Okay. And basically, you take nature items. We're taking the trail trimmings, ferns and flowers, and we trim the trails. We're saving them and drying them. And we use those on some special art paper and some special botanicals. And this allows you to create an old fashioned cyanotype print. Mm -hmm. This was a process developed in about 1881, so it's a very early ancient process. It's still used today for blueprint printing, but to do it in this nature environment, it's really cool what you can develop out of that. And we are going to be doing a shop geared to kids under 16, and then we'll do an adult workshop for 16 and up. And the one on July 31st will be for the adults, the one for the kids on the 28th. And the one on the 28th is 10 a.m. to 2, so kids can bring like a picnic. And then the one for adults will be 9 to noon, so we'll have uh, some snacks out there. And again, just to recap, the one for the kids, Thursday, July the 28th, 10 o'clock in the morning until 2, and then the adults are Sunday. July the 31st, 9A until about noon. And do you do this outside? Do you come? Do we have a? Do you have a shelter? Or It'll be in a shelter underneath the shelter, but outside. Yes. Which, and no, you are allowed to collect things off the ground. So we'll let kids okay. and adults go out and get leaves, for example. You can get your own leaves. Just is, can't pick anything off the forest grounds. You can bring flowers and stuff from your yard if you I, want. I'm just going to ask you. I don't. I'm not. I don't know the answer to the question. Is there a fee for folks to come out, or just shop? There by? is a fee on Small, the yes fee. and the Eventbrite. If you go to Canal State Forest Foundation Facebook site or go straight to Event okay. Bright, you can purchase a ticket because you have to have a res reserve spot. We're limited to 20. About 20 folks. And it's $20 a piece. Okay. And by the way, that's quite inexpensive uh, if you ever very, look up one of these workshops. A very workshops. nominal fee, yeah. Yeah, very nominal fee. Yeah, very. Covers the cost of the materials. And then later on, we're always trying to do something to get folks to come out to Canal State Forest. And, of course, it's always available just to stop out and hike anytime you want. You can also bike out there. Mm -hmm. But you're having a really neat Rock the Park. This is a free outdoor concert. And that is Saturday. You can see on the screen there, August the 13th. And you have your notes in front of you. What is happening at Canal State Forest, Rock the Park, August the 13th, Well, first Jennifer. of all, we have five excellent bands. We're going to have the George Washington High School Band out there, them, which would yeah. be a lot of fun. That's just before school starts, so it'll give a last hurrah, yep. so mm -hmm. to speak, for the mm -hmm. teenagers. Four Chill, which does R&B, and many of you have heard them here in town. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to have Aaron Fisher and Ghost Fleet. Which I don't know will be them, but I can't wait to hear them. Kind of an Americana. Okay. And Very Patty good. and the Butchers, the, the band name wasn't familiar to me, but any of you that are old school, I'm talking about 60s rock and roll, you're going to know the band members. They're the ones who have the history of Charleston <laughs> rock and roll scene. Mm -hmm. So a lot of well-known people in that band. And Carpenter Ants, which many people know and is a very popular Michael band Lipton here. And the crew, Michael right? Lipton and crew. They'll be out there. So the event is Saturday, August the 13th. It mm -hmm. starts at 11 a.m. Right. goes until 5. Do you bring your own food? Is there food going to be out There's there? There's going to be some hot dogs. You're chili selling hot with dogs the or slaw, you know, fully loaded hot dogs. And it's all by donation because okay. some people who can't afford, we want them to come. And if you can afford a little more, toss it in the jar and help somebody who can't so afford. So, what do, do folks come out? Bring a blanket, bring a lawn chair? They can bring a it? lawn chair, bring a blanket. We'll have some chairs out there as well. And we're going to have, you know, some putt-putt golf. We have some folks that have loaned us their cool little putt-putts from, the, from uh, some, some of, Charleston events. Yeah, are some of the pictures that we're seeing on the screen now, are those from Rock That's from Rock the Park. Now, before? that would have been a, a previous year. But, right. So yeah, that's what, that's what it kind of shows like. you how to be set up. We've got the city band stage rented. Out of the 9,300 acres that makes up the Canal State Forest, where about is Rock the Park? It'll be right at 
the main headquarters. Right when, in the beginning of yeah. the park. Well, when you go in the entrance, you drive about a mile. Okay. Then you're going to see a sign that says Camp Kanawha. Okay. You turn left, that's the main parking lot. It's huge. And that's where the headquarters and the nature center are. And the bandstand will be set up right near that building. I've been meaning to ask somebody, and I'm just going to ask you, and I don't know the answer to this. And it's okay if you don't know. And I'm just going to thank, gosh, do we still have a swimming pool at Kanawha State Forest? It's out it's of not, commission. It's out of it'll, commission. It'll okay. never be opened again. So we're not going to open it again. Never. I swam there as a child many, many years yeah. ago. In the, in Unfortunately, the 60s. it was a big money loser, and okay. the state just can't support Are that. Are we using that space for anything else? Well, the plan is they're going to crush it in and okay. potentially put an amphitheater back there. Oh, but, that uh, would be nice. I would say don't repurpose put it. <laughs> it a little bit behind the shelter where we used to go and pay a dollar or whatever right. it was fifty cents to swim. But the old swim complex has been repurposed. That's your okay. headquarters and your nature center now. Oh, very nice. Yeah. We are talking with Jennifer Baum and Jennifer's the volunteer coordinator with Kanawha State Forest Foundation. What else is happening out there at Kanawha State Forest? We got their events in. And I said earlier that you're year round, but you're, there's always seemingly something happening out there. Always. Yes, always seemingly needing something happening. Needing volunteers, always. It's what, really. And what would they do I mean, besides well, the events? Clean know, up a little bit. Yes. Make sure the trails are clean. Make sure the you know, there's exactly. no trees hanging over. You could bring your own trimmers if you have a gas or electric trimmer. We have so mm. many trails out there now. Mm. We have three times as many trails as there used to be. I, I have mean, walked many, many trails at Canal State Forest. I'm somewhat of a, of a regular, and my buddy Rick Ferris lives out there. Yes. And Rick and I. I'll walk a lot. Well, and every once in a while, we'll come across the log on a path, and those are the kind of some things you're talking about. If you have a, a chainsaw or a trimmer, or just something it doesn't have to be that extensive, but just mm -hmm. anything to help, right? Anything to Keep help. Keep it nice for the people that like to go out and enjoy the nature. And also, we need signposts painted. We need shelters touched up. You know that kind of thing. We have, in fact, the painting supplies are in the headquarters. Mm -hmm. They're there so you can walk in and do your own spontaneous, you know. <laughs> signpost painting. But we also have a lot of organized things. For example, we do a gun range cleanup the first Monday of every month. We shut it down and keep it shut all day. And come on out, collect some brass. It's two bucks a pound now. Uh -huh. But I'm just saying we need yeah. people to come out, lift the trash, and help us out on that. Do we still have the horse stables out there? Is there still horseback riding out there? There's that horseback gone? riding, but those are private horses. People okay. bring them in. The barn is I'm asking of, questions that I don't. I didn't know the answer to. Yeah. Out of commission, unfortunately. Um, you know, if somebody has some really big bucks, mm -hmm. you could probably yeah. renovate it, but it's it's not in the plans, as far as I know. I didn't. I didn't think we were doing that, but the, because I was out there not long ago and I hiked in where the horses used to to go on some of the trails out there. It's now a hiking trail. So. Well, the parking lot in front of the barn has mm -hmm. been leveled and it's graveled and it's definitely set up for big trailers and trucks so pull on in bring your horses you're absolutely welcome there there's a trail map you can pick up in the office that'll tell you which trails you can take the horses on a, a pretty exciting things happening at canal state forest we've already kind of talked about the uh, the handicap acceptable park for the children we talked about a couple of events coming up the sun print uh, the sun print workshops kids thursday july 28th adults on Sunday, July the 31st. We talked about August the 13th, Rock the Park. It's a free outdoor con concert, free outdoor concerts. Four or five bands are gonna be out there. It runs from 11 a.m. until five on August the 13th, kind of kind of the final party for the, at least some of the teenagers that are going back to uh, school and, and some of the kids that are getting kind of into the summer. Great bands. Jennifer says there's going to be some food out there. Make some donations if you'd like to, but it's going to be a, a pretty fun day. There's Rock the Park. Look at that from a couple of years back. That looks uh, like it's a, a definitely a place you want to stop by. Again, Saturday, August 13th, 11 a.m. to 5 in the afternoon. Uh, Jennifer, wow, we've got a lot in. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Seemingly people don't, don't know how wonderful, what a great asset Canal State Force is mm -hmm. to our community. Do you have a parting shot for the audience? Invite them to get involved, invite them to call you and, and volunteer. Definitely and, get involved. Yeah. We just completely depend on volunteers. The staff is actually rather thin for that mm -hmm. much acreage. And everything you can pitch in is a help. Very good. Know? We hope you can help. Give Jennifer a call, reach out to her, reach out to them on Facebook, inbox them, find a way to get a hold of them. Call me if you have to. I, I can get you in touch with uh, Jennifer. Just get involved. And that is all the time we have for on this edition of Highlights. As always, brought to you through a collaboration between Jim Strine and Company, the Media Center, and HD Media, along with our newest sponsor, Banker's Life. There's no life 
like the banker's life. We'll see you at Canal State Forest. We'll see you at the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. And we'll see you next time right here on Highlights. Take care. Mm -hmm.